We continue our discussion tonight with Jason Russell, founder and president of Secure Education Consultants, a group appointed by Governor Whitmer to serve on the School Safety and Mental Health Commission. Thank you for being here with us tonight. Thanks for having me. So in the wake of this tragedy, a lot of people are concerned when it comes to school safety. So what has the state done to improve overall school safety and security? The state of Michigan really got to quick action after the tragedy in Oxford. Uh, there was some legislation passed that allowed schools to have assessments done. So the state funded every public and private school in the state to have an assessment done. And they've devoted a lot of attention to really focusing in on the mental health needs and, and how that plays a role in identifying kids that may be at risk. And then also adding additional security features to schools that will you know, make them more difficult targets. You know, hindsight is 2020, and whether we're talking about Oxford or some of the shootings around the country, it seems like a lot of mistakes have been made and a lot of issues are only identified after the fact. What are some of the common issues you are seeing out there that need to be addressed? You know, I think the biggest one is we focus so much on the response that we kind of, in some ways, forget that there's ways to prevent these things from happening in the first place. So focusing on positive school climates where kids feel connected to their peers, feel connected to teachers. Uh, when we identify kids that are that are showing warning signs to make sure that we're following proper, you know, doing the right things in terms of behavioral threat assessment uh, and really focus more on prevention than on response. I think the solution is always continue to harden the target and put more physical security in place. But as we've seen, that's obviously not the solution because it hasn't worked so far. And Jason, we know that it's a process when implementing any kind of change. Are there any common hurdles that schools often face when it comes to putting some of those changes in place? Yeah, I think the biggest one would be funding, right? So when the state, you know, provides for money, it, it, it doesn't necessarily create sustainability for the district. So you can put things in place, but when that money goes away, districts have to figure out a way to keep those safety and security elements in place. So the sustainability of safety and security in terms of schools being able to get funding. And then the other one would just be, you know, belief, uh, you know, that, the, that it can happen here. Although we've seen it, you know, close to home, there still are people that don't believe that it'll happen in their district. So we need people to understand that it can happen anywhere and we all need to prepare. We've seen a lot of people in the Oxford community, especially pushing for some of these changes, including students who have been really out there calling for resignations and, and just demanding change. Uh, do you think that is effective or should it even be on the community and the students to kind of drive this change? It really needs to come from every different direction, right? As a parent, you know, I'm always talking about school safety and security. Obviously, it's what I do every day for a living. You know, I responded to Oxford that day and assisted the district uh, with some ongoing efforts there. And I think everybody needs to be involved in school safety and security. It's our communities. And as we can see with what happened with the tragedy in Oxford, not only does it impact the kids in the school, but it impacts the entire community and quite frankly, the entire state and the nation. So there's a role that we all can play in improving school safety and security. It's just we have to focus on it and continue to make strides. Now you mentioned funding. Are there other things that these schools in the United States should be asking for or pushing for? It definitely needs to start with mental health, right? It needs to start with uh, identifying kids that are that are showing concerning behaviors. And really, that's that's free. You know, behavioral threat assessment and the things that go along with that are free. But schools can't find mental health professionals to be to you know to put in their districts right now. That's one of the things we're focusing on at the. Uh, school safety and mental health commission is create those mental health positions that we can put in schools so we have the resources to identify and intervene in those kids lives to get them off that path to violence. And Jason, have you seen any examples? Is there anything we can point to that's done a good job of promoting that positive environment where students are engaged and, and mental health is at the forefront or does something still need to be developed? The, the processes are in place it's you know it's it's still a new you know this it's not a perfect science so the the interesting thing about school safety is when something doesn't happen we can't prove what prevented it right so that's kind of the paradox of security so we would have to assume that because we don't see these incidents every day in schools that some of the efforts we're taking are, are having an effect so we really need to just keep diligent on focusing on the mental health focusing on assessing your facilities to make sure you have the proper processes, procedures, and security in place and make that an ongoing process for schools.
All right. Jason Russell from Secure Education Consultants. We appreciate what you do. Thanks for your time today. Thank you.